Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with what's coming up this week for the week ending the 7th of June 2020 as well as a statement from Cloud Imperium about the missing Squadron 42 updates. There was a new RSI launcher update for some back-end fixes related to telemetry that's already been deployed. The launcher should now read version 1.4.1 for you. The free fly event ends today the 2nd of June so get flying if you've got time still. Uh, the Avenger Starship deal will fly away at 7 a.m. UTC on the 3rd of June for those of you that wanted to pick up that pack. That nets you something a little bit better than a normal starter ship. In fact, it's one of my recommended ships to start with if you don't want to break the bank. But it's not the cheapest way to start. You can just start with like a, a Mustang Alpha if you want for $45. So sort of bear that in mind. You can get all this stuff in game. Again, later today, the narrative team will be sharing a portfolio on Geisen Inc. They make the bag on head soft shell helmets that you can buy from the oppressive Lawville. I will probably start covering law in a bit more detail once it becomes more appropriately irrelevant to actually playing the game. What I mean by that is that I'd like to do like an applied law series that will help you understand law that benefits you in game. So if there's a reason to know the law in game that gives you more advantages, great. I think actually we're pretty close to being there already. Uh, so I'll start reviewing the Galactopedia a bit more. Wednesday, we will have the Persistent Universe and Squadron 42 monthly reports. They give us a huge amount of info on what Cloud Imperium is currently working on and has just been working on. There's also an AMA and Ask Me Anything on the Spectrum forum starting at 6.30 p.m. UTC, answering questions specific to Theatres of War. Uh, Sean Tracy is going to be there, Rich Tyro, and Johnny Javasis, Javasis, I can't say his name ever. Questions can be submitted from 6.15 p.m. that day. I am going to be putting some questions together and I have participated in both the CitizenCon teaser and Eva Carly play tests for Theatres of War so far, so I have some questions. But if you have any that you would like me to include while I'm there, or you won't be there yourself, or you want me to merge them with mine, then please leave them in the comments below. As with everything, I'll cover the answers in a video at some point too. On Thursday, Cloud Imperium's official Inside Star Citizen video will look at the restricted area rework as well as a sprint report. So sprint reports cover a huge range of features currently being worked on and are typically some of my favorite offerings from Cloud Imperium when they share them with us. On Friday, the 5th of June, Sarah McCullough from the ship and vehicle team is going to be on Star Citizen Live at 5 p.m. UTC. She was involved with the creation of the Argo SRV, Mercury Star Runner, Hercules Star Lifter, Hammerhead and Tumbrel Ranger vehicles, uh, ships and vehicles. I saw her art station and um, beyond some of the cool ships she's worked on, she also had immortalized her beloved pet dog as an awesome piece of concept art. And let it be known, when I pass, I hope that I can be immortalized as concept art, maybe like a potato in the field of some sort of Star Citizen farming concept gameplay art. We will also see the newsletter and roadmap roundup for Star Citizen for the weekend too. This should yield some useful information on 3.10.0 and whether it's going to make the end of June for its live build and if there's any new features or anything that's been pushed back for that patch, hopefully it will be covered there. Where are we with our Squadron 42 updates though? Well, we've been waiting on a Squadron 42 update that Cloud Imperium was supposed to post up a couple of weeks ago in the form of a video, but that video was delayed on its release day with uh, apparently being some editorial issues but now they've made a statement what was going on with these editorial issues and what's happening with Squadron 42 updates. We're aware that many of you are eagerly awaiting the Squadron 42 update video we had mentioned previously. We're eager too, so much so that we jumped the gun and posted a published date prematurely. We mentioned editorial issues and to be very specific about what we meant, the video just wasn't good enough, which oftentimes can be the case when we're working creatively. It's very rare that we publish any video without going through some level of iteration. Our goal is to provide you with all the meaningful content after all. For this episode, it lacked the B-roll to properly illustrate what we'd been discussing, which led to it feeling like a lot of words without visual substance. We played with it and added more visuals to better accompany our discussion. However, it became clear that we still weren't quite there. So we've had to reshoot some of it to better reflect what we want to 
show. To properly set expectations, this video is just another way to share more information by checking in with Brian Chambers and some of the devs and seeing what they're working on. Our goal overall is to simply create more ways to share Squadron 42 progress updates with you, especially in lieu of the roadmap visualization, which is being updated. We don't want to leave you in the dark, so while progress continues on an updated roadmap, which we're looking forward to rolling out, stay tuned and we'll update the community content schedule as quickly as possible and not before it's ready. So it seems there was a lot of improvements that they wanted to make to the video offering for Squadron 42 updates that they're going to be giving us, and we don't know when that's actually going to be released. They are still working on a roadmap to visually show what's going on with Squadron 42's progress and all that sort of jazz. So I'm looking forward to anything they roll out for that. Um, I hope that video-wise we'll see something in June for that Squadron 42 updates, but we do have the monthly report coming out this week that should go at least some way of tidying us over with some Squadron 42 info. Finally, Star Citizen leaks have been implying that the mining vehicle, the ground-based mining vehicle that was first talked about at CitizenCon 2019, may be in full production at the moment and might be coming later this year, potentially for 3.0. 10 or 3.11. They said they're going to share some more information with us by the end of the week, so we'll have to see. At the moment, it's just a rumor, but, you know, rumors are something that we deal with here. Every month, we have a ship giveaway for June. It's for an Espirit Tavaran Prowler dropship and Star Citizen game package, kindly supplied by Cloud Imperium. Just comment on any of my videos made during June to be in for a chance of winning that. Oh, what's that? What am I shilling for? This month, you ask? Well, the same thing I shill for every month. Uh, if you need a VPN, then check out NordVPN. It's a cheap, fast, and has a load of benefits over free VPN services. Consider it for security, privacy, protection, content accessibility, and even to help with bandwidth limits. You also get a shipload of money off via the links below. I am NordGamer. I was going to go with board VPN, but that didn't sound right. Um, Nord NordGamer sounds perfect for my shillingness. Also, if you're looking for a gaming PC or a gaming PC upgrade, instead consider Shadow. It's a subscription-based service that starts around uh, $11 or £12 or some euros, and that streams a Windows 10 system to your device, be it another PC laptop, phone, or TV using the powers of the internet, and there's a wide range of hardware to meet your needs. It means you don't have to maintain your own rig, so if you dream of 4K gaming and you don't want to break the bank, it's an option. All their services are very suitable for Star Citizen, but there may be a waiting list based on what country and state you are in. 